From the main instrument view, we'll zoom into SEM1 and have a closer look at each parameter. Firstly, you'll notice the controls you'd expect from a SEM on the left. But on the right, there's controls for what we term the rear of the SEM. This is where the extra controls are, and we'll get to those in a moment. But for now, let's look at the waveform selection and volume knobs. With a zero value at 12 o'clock, turning the VCO 1 and 2 knobs counterclockwise introduces the saw wave. Turning these knobs clockwise introduces the pulse waveform, the width of which can be determined by the pulse width knob in the main VCO 1 and 2 control section, something we'll get to later. VCO 3's waveform knob differs slightly in that when VCO 3 is used as an oscillator, turning it clockwise introduces pink noise, and turning it counterclockwise introduces one of the waveforms selected in the VCO3 section saw, sine, or square. The pitch of VCO1 and 2 is set by the dual frequency knobs here. The outer ring gives you control over course tune, while the center ring gives you control over fine tune. The original hardware instrument had continuous tuning in the course section and this has been recreated on OBE. However, there are times when you might want stepped tuning on this outer ring, say to quickly tune to a fifth or an octave. And this can be done via a control click or right click on your mouse. you can then adjust the fine tune via the inner knob. Again, when used as a normal oscillator, VCO3 functions in exactly the same way. The sync switch synchronizes VCO1 and 2 with VCO1 becoming the master oscillator and VCO2 becoming the slave oscillator. When sync is selected, the master oscillator resets the slave oscillator, i.e. VCO2, and this produces a complex harmonic tone, particularly when the slave oscillator is modulated by a suitable source. For example, with envelope 2 selected on OBE's VCO2. Modulation of VCO1 and 2 is determined by the mod 1 and 2 knobs respectively, the source of which is determined by the switch underneath. Turning the mod 1 and 2 knobs counterclockwise introduces frequency modulation in accordance with the setting in the source switch below. while turning the knob clockwise introduces pulse width modulation. And naturally this will only work when the pulse waveform is selected. Again, this pulse width modulation source is selected in the switch below. The modulation source options for VCO1 are either Envelope 1, VCO3, 
or LFO1. The modulation source options for VCO2 are either Envelope 2, VCO3 or LFO1. The VCF is modelled on the original SEM multi-mode 12 dB per octave filter and as you would expect we have control over cutoff frequency and resonance. We also have control over modulation via the mod knob which can be set to either negative or positive values with the source determined by the switch below. These sources are either envelope 2, VCO3, or LFO1. The filter mode is set by either the knob that progressively changes the filter mode from low pass through notch and high pass. Or via the band pass mode switch. When bandpass is activated, the knob above has no effect. Envelopes 1 and 2 are three stage affairs, giving control over attack, decay and sustain. Envelope 1 by and large is used for the VCA. and envelope 2 is used to shape the filter when envelope 2 is selected as the filter modulation source. In between the envelopes, we see the LFO1 rate knob, which can be free running or synchronized to the host tempo via the switch underneath. <laughs> At the bottom of the main SEM panel is a red LED which illuminates when the SEM is triggered. You can also click on this LED to hear the sound of that SEM. Astride the LED we have buttons marked as follows. Copy, 
which copies the setting of the currently selected SEM into the clipboard. Paste, which allows you to paste settings copied into the clipboard into the desired SEM. Zoom, which zooms in and out of the appropriate SEM. Lock, which stops the SEM from being edited at all. Solo, which obviously solos the selected SEM. And Mute, which obviously mutes the selected SEM. Looking at the rear SEM panel, we have a wealth of keyboard velocity response parameters, including the obligatory velocity to filter cutoff, velocity to VCA gain, plus many more. When you set a parameter to respond to velocity, you'll see a yellow corona indicated on the parameter. There's also a variety of selectable aftertouch destinations. Right clicking on the display gives us a list of what's possible, including filter cutoff, amplitude, VCO1 modulation, VCO2 modulation, and LFO1 rate. You can then set an amount for each of these via the aptly named amount knob. When you set an amount for an aftertouch destination, you'll see a blue corona indicated on the parameter. But if both velocity response and aftertouch are assigned to the same parameter, you'll see a green corona. We also have filter tracking controls allowing control over amount with positive and negative values, plus a center knob which determines the position across the keyboard range where tracking takes effect. The LFO1 controls give us detailed adjustment of the main LFO, the rate of which is determined by the knob on the front panel. In this section, we have control over wave shape, including triangle, Sign, ramp up, half square, square, and noise for sample and hold type modulation. key re-trigger option, plus an intro or ramp in knob which allows us to apply a delay before the LFO takes effect. The VCO3 section allows control over a third oscillator which can either be used at audio rate or as a low frequency oscillator. When used as a normal oscillator, the frequency knob determines the pitch of VCO3, with the waveform being selected by the switch below, that gives the choice of either sine, saw, or square waveform. The latter is a fixed 50% square, and its width cannot be changed. The mod source switch determines whether the above sine, saw or square waveforms are used as a modulation source or noise, specifically pink noise. The mod envelope switch enables modulation via envelope 1 or envelope 2 or nothing if so desired. LFO rate determines whether VCO3 is used as an audio rate oscillator or a low frequency oscillator. And as you'd expect when used as an LFO, 
the frequency or rate and the wave shape are selected via the frequency knob and wave shape switch. Finally in this section we have a re-trigger option and an intro or ramp in mode as per LFO1. The load and save buttons should be self-evident, but these allow the user to save individual SEM settings and then load them into other SEMs should you wish. A note of caution. Using the Save SEM Preset button will only save the currently active SEM settings. It does not save the entire patch. To save an entire patch, you must use the main save button below the parameter display window. Likewise, using the load SEM preset button will only load a SEM preset into the currently active SEM. It will not load an entire patch. However, if you want to load a SEM preset into every SEM, activate the group button, then load the required SEM preset. And this will now be allocated to all eight SEMs. <laughs> 